Welcome everybody and thanks for being here today. We are Andrea and Luca and we are uh, Android developer at Synesthesia. Today we want to talk about the Google Cardboard, of course. Luca. Uh, here, one slide back. Luca. Back one. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. No, you're welcome. Here you can find our contacts, so feel free to contact us if you need some help, some advice, or if you just want to share your experience with us. Before, okay. Bye. Some time ago, when Synesthesia started to prepare and organize the DroidCon, we decided to, to do a talk. But the most difficult thing was to choose the right topic. Uh, since Google presented the, the Google Cardboard, we find it really, really interesting. And moreover, very few speakers talk about it. So we decided to do de it. But what Cardboard really is? Technically, it's just a, a foldable Cardboard with lens and magnet that affords a virtual reality experience. This is all by two things. The first, a smartphone with a stereoscopic uh, software display that fits into it. And the second are the lens that allow to perceive left and right A's in a single three-dimensional view. But okay, now, before we really start, I want to dispel some myths. Because when I start to study about the cardboard, a lot of friends see me with these strange things in front of my face, and so they ask me, what it is, and they don't know what it is and what it can do. So I will take all these strange questions all together, and I want to discuss with you today. The first question, strange question that my, my friends asked me was, if I fit the cardboard, can I become like this or see something like this? I'm sorry for you guys, but with the cardboard, you will not become Iron Man, or you will not see something like, you, like he can see in the helmet. So for the moment, Jarvis must be weighed a little. The next strange question that my friends asked me was this one. Can I see through the wall because I have a nice neighbor and I would like to see her, but also this is not possible for the moment, guys. Also for this, we must be weighed. The third que strange question, one of the best, is can I fill the cardboard with alcohol like this barnacular? I think this is a really brilliant idea, but for the moment, you cannot. I know that Google is working to do it. It will become a fix soon, but for the moment, you cannot. If you try to, de to do this, I think the, the cardboard will, be, will melt on the floor. So don't try this at home. And the last, but not the least, but my, fir my, my favorite is this one. Can I see through uh, under the clothes of the girl Really, really no, guys. I have tried, and this is not possible now. But if someone of you are, are so sad that want to leave the room, uh, I can understand. So you, you can. But now, seriously. OK, you can, hear, you can see here when the cardboard was presented. They, it was uh, made by two Google engineers in uh, Google Cultural Institute in Paris. And they did it in the 20% of time. Here, it was the 2014 when they, the engineer presented it. Okay. But if we do a little step back, we have said that the cardboard is a way to consume virtual reality content. But the first experiment in the virtual reality was dated 1968 by this guy. But today, I think this is not a guy, but in 1968. Um, and what you can see in the next slide, okay, this is his experiment. So it, it, it seems to the, the cardboard, the actual cardboard. And in the next slide, you can see, okay, the title, The Swords of Damocle. I want to, I want to you to see the, um, the arms in, in the, above the head of the user. This was used for tracking the head, the, move, the head movement. Today we have gyroscope, but in the 1968 we have not. So they use this. And this strange shape inspiring Shatterland to call this project, the, the code project was the Sword of Damocle. 
I don't want that this all become an history lesson about virtual reality, but just give you some little information about what, uh, what virtual reality is. And if someone of you want to start to go deep, deeper, can, uh, can start searching by Ivan Sutherland on, on Google. And for the all the fans of Star Wars like me, this is how I imagined uh, w when Sutherland meets Cardboard, I'm your father. Okay, but so we have talked about virtual reality and now I want just to give you a little, little uh, definition about virtual reality. So in the next slide, Wikipedia, okay, say that virtual reality is an immersive mode, okay, immer is immersion into a virtual reality, is a perception of being physically present in that place. And this is how the perception is created by surrounding the user of the virtual reality image, sounds, or other stimuli. For reach this, we need, of course, a viewer. And here you can see the most popular viewer that, that we have on the market now. I think that most of you know e almost every of these. But today we want to talk about the carbon, of course. Here you can see all the app, all, just a, a little of all the app that are today on the market. What I want to show you is that uh, a lot of developers are building great app for cardboard. And today we want to explore free example for see what cardboard can do and uh, all the potential of the cardboard. The first, the first example that I want to show you is, of course, the Google example app. I think many of you know this app, and th this is a collection of examples. You can uh, sh uh, see left and right, move your hand, uh, head, and choose your example. One that I want to talk to you is this one, exactly. This is how you can explore the Versailles Palace in an Im immersive experience. You can uh, look left and right and see the place while uh, a guide voice explains you everything about that place. This is one example and show you how Carbol fits very well for tourism field and uh, especially for what concerns tourism and museum. So in my opinion, Carbol is a great for, for museum experience, a new museum experience. The next slide, okay. I choose this example, Stereogram, because in my opinion, the developer built a great app that integrates very well the menu functionality. In the center of the screen, you have the virtual reality content that you can see in virtual reality mode, of course. And all around, you have the menu functionality. So you can watch the, the functionality and pull in the trigger for entering that functionality. I think this is a, a great choose, but now I have talked about the trigger, but don't worry. Later, Luca will explain you everything about the trigger. Okay, the last one. Okay, this is my favorite. With this app, you can be on the stage with Paul McCartney, with Sir Paul McCartney, excuse me. And you can see left and right, and you can see the, the band. You can, uh, you can have the perception or be physically on the stage. And I think that this is a, a really new experience for a customer. Here, and the slide next. Thank you, Luca. You can see how two brands, uh, Renault and Mercedes, choose Carbor as a way for advertising. What I want to say with this slide, I want to focalize the potential of Carbor in the commercial, for commercial purpose. For example, Mercedes have chosen Carbor, they, they made an app for promote their, their car and for to show what their car can do. And this is a great, a great new typology of the advertising. Since now I have shown you typology of application made for Carbor, just for Carbor, but you can also integrate this functionality in your own application. In this example, I want to show you 
for uh, Google Map, every, everybody knows Google Map, but I don't know if, if everybody knows that in Google Map you can, Google Map have integrated the cardboard. You can just search for a place, tap on uh, street view mode and starting a street view mode. Okay, now double tapping the bottom right button, you can enter in a cardboard view. So what do I want to mean? If your app have a virtual reality content or content that can be used or consumed in virtual reality mode, I suggest you to integrate or try to integrate the cardboard in your app. Now, I let the words to Luca, my workmate, to show you the cardboard deeply. Okay, so now that we know what can we do with uh, cardboard, let's look inside it. So. The main goal of the engineers that create the cardboard was to create the simplest and cheapest uh, uh, virtual reality viewer possible for your phone. So in this picture, you can see all the stuff that you need to create a perfectly working cardboard. So basically, it's just uh, some cardboard, uh, the lenses, uh, Velcro strip, NFC tag, and a uh, rubber band. <coughs> the most interesting part uh, that I will discuss with you of the cardboard are uh, the lenses, and I will show later uh, why are they are needed. The magnet, which is really important because you have to think that while the phone is inside the cardboard, you can't touch the phone or you can't touch the physical button of your device. So we need a way to give input to our app. And uh, the engineers uh, find this uh, really clever solution that was using the magnet. Later, I will show how this works. Finally, the NFC tag can be used to detect when the phone is in inside the cardboard to maybe enter automatically in the virtual reality mode. So it c the, the c the your app can switch between virtual reality and standard mode using the NFC tag. Okay, let's start with the lenses. In this picture, you can see uh, the cardboard without the top. So basically what we have is uh, we have two holes for our eyes and the screen of our phone that is at a fixed distance between our eyes and uh, the screen itself. If we don't put lenses in the, in the holes, what happens is that the distance between the screen and our eyes is too short and the, our view is too wide so we don't get the uh, immersive uh, perspective because we see the outs outside our of our screen, and also we can't focus uh, the image on the screen because the of the short distance. But if we put lenses uh, in the holes, our view is focused on the screen in front of us, and we can see clearly, even if the distance is uh, really short. Unfortunately, uh, using the lens, uh, we have a side effect, which is called pincushion distortion. So basically, the image that we see is distorted, and, and the outer part of the image, are, uh, you see it larger than the central one, so you don't have a clear view. But fortunately, we can fix this, and basically it's what the Carbor SDK does. So if we don't uh, use the correction, we have a, a pincushion distortion in the image. But if, uh, sorry, I think it's wrong. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the image uh, suffered by pincushion distortion. We can fix that by applying the infer inverted function of this distortion, which is called barrel distortion. In this way, if we have a barrel distorted image in the screen and we look it at it through the lenses which cause pincushion distortion, we can see a perfectly image. So, this is really good. Next, we don't need any more the arms over our heads to detect where we are looking or uh, uh, where the device is oriented, but we can use gyroscope and accelerometers. Using this uh, sensor, the um, SDK can uh, give us the exact position of uh, our head and uh, we know what, where we are looking. So we can draw, we will see later how, we can draw on the surface of our screen the correct uh, portion of uh, our virtual reality world. Then again, the magnet. The magnet is, uh, as I said before, is uh, necessary to 
have a sort of way to give input at our app. So how it works? Basically, uh, pulling the trigger, uh, which cause a uh, distortion on the magnetic field around the phone because it's, the, it's a magnet. So if our phone has a magnetometer on it, we can detect the change of the magnetic field and basically we can trigger the button. So it's working like a button, but the what is behind it is completely different. It's, just, uh, it's not attached, but it's a um, magnetic field uh, distortion. Finally, as I said before, the NFC tag. This can be used to detect when uh, the cardboard, when the phone is inside the cardboard, to maybe enter automatically in the virtual reality mode. And uh, Andrea told you that you can, in Google Map, you can uh, uh, double tap on the refresh button while you are in uh, street view mode to enter in uh, virtual reality mode. But if you put the phone on the cardboard, it will enter automatically in the virtual reality mode because it detected NFC. Okay, so I think that now all we know how it's work, but we are developers, so let's dive into code, right? <laughs> At the moment, uh, Google is providing three different SDK for uh, the Google Cardboard. Uh, one for Android, one for uh, Unity, and one for uh, Chrome HTML5, basically. Today, of course, since we are at Droicon, we'll focus on the Android SDK. So, uh, I just want to show you, hope you don't get bored too fast. <laughs> I just want to show you what are the basic steps that we need to do to implement a simple uh, cardboard application. So, first thing, we need to uh, download the cardboard SDK. It's, uh, they are, it, it's composed by two jar you can download directly from the Cardboard website. You just have to, I know, I'm pretty sure that all of you know how to include the jars in your project. You just have to put on the libs directory and remember to tell Gradle to add them to your APK. So then, as always, when we do an Android application, we need to define a layout. It's uh, nothing more than a Standard layout in the, uh, from the SDK, we, we get the cardboard view, so we just need to define an XML. In this case, I define, I put the cardboard view inside the relative layout because to show you that it can be used as a, the root, as a root view directly, the cardboard view, but you can also use a nested view like you do most of the time or on Android. So it's a, a simple view. Then we need to define uh, an activity. The activity must extend cardboard activity, which is uh, an activity from the cardboard SDK. Doing that, uh, you will get some default setting. For example, the activity is locked in the landscape mode. It's a full screen. You have the UI button, system UI button uh, hidden. But you can still override this. Uh, I don't know if it <laughs> can be useful, but you can change this setting, overriding uh, the default setting. Then, on the onCreate method, we, as always, we set the content view, setting the layout we created before. Then uh, we take a reference uh, of the, our cardboard view. We set a renderer. For uh, the one of you that already worked with OpenGL, I'm, I'm sure you know what I mean. Uh, you will see that developing for cardboard is really, really similar to create uh, OpenGL app uh, for Android. Anyway, I will explain the renderer uh, later. So we create the lender, and then we need to pass to the activity a reference of uh, our cardboard view. Okay, the render. Mm, the render must implement this interface, which is stereo render. It's really similar to the classic render interface we have to implement to create OpenGL application. Basically, uh, you have to override these three methods. Uh, I will explain step by step these three methods because it's really the core where the things happen when uh, for cardboard development. So the first one, on new frame. On new frame is uh, called uh, at the beginning of uh, each frame. And um, as you can see, we get as parameters the head transform. Inside this object, uh, uh, we get the orientation and the uh, device position. So 
it's used the gyro it, it's the SDK used the gyroscope and the accelerometer, as I said before, and give us this head transform object that take gives us coordinates of where we are looking where, when we wear the cardboard, basically. So we should prepare our render in this method, but not do the real render, because that must be done inside this method, on draw eye. This is where we do the render. It's similar to the on render of the OpenGL uh, standard render interface. But the difference, the main difference is it's called two time for each frame because it's called one time for each eyes. So you, as you can see, we receive as a parameter an A. Inside this object, we have uh, two metrics, the transformation matrix and the perspective matrix. Inside this matrix, we have the correction for uh, the distortion that I told you before, pincushion distortion, barrel distortion, and uh, um, the stereo. So the, le the right eyes will look a bit more right and the left eye will look a bit more left. So basically what we need to do is apply this transformation matrix to our GL uh, environment and we'll get a stereoscopic view. So really, really easy. Finally, we have the unfinished frame. This method is called when the frame is finished to be drawn and uh, can be used if maybe we want to draw something of that is overlaid on the on the screen. It's not called for two time one for each a. So what you get is the full screen. It's not stereoscopic. So you have to take care of this. If it's not good to do stereoscopic thing, basically. Finally, we have these other three methods that. I think are self-explanatory, really, really simply. Simply, uh, the first one on cardboard trigger, you get call, you override this method, and whenever the, p the user pull the trigger, you get this method called. So you can do your logic uh, inside it, and and the same thing. So the first one is uh, using the magnet, uh, of course, and the last two uh, are uh, from the NFC. So you get this method called. You can register for a, as a specific intent to get to. Um, launch your app, if you register your app for this intent, when, you're, when your phone is inside the cardboard, the intent is launched, so your app can start automatically maybe, or you get this method called when the, when the, uh, when the phone is inserted in or removed uh, from the cardboard. So yeah, that's it. It's really, really simple, uh, as you can see, to start developing uh, for cardboard, and it's fun, so I invite all of you to try it, because I think it's really fun. And uh, we did some experiment, and uh, we tried to add uh, another thing on it. We tried to mix uh, cardboard and uh, augmented reality. So for the reason, I give the word back to Andrea. that will explain you something about uh, augmented reality and our experiment. OK. As before, I don't want to do a lesson about augmented reality, but just to give you uh, some info of uh, what augmented reality is. Augmented reality is a, live, is a live view of a physical real world, and that world was augmented by computer-generated input, such as image, sound, or GPS content. In the next slide, you can see an example of augmented reality. Here, you can see a place, a common place, and above the surface, the augmented reality framework puts some information some geolocated information. That information are uh, specific in uh, some latitude and longitude position. And this is one of the augmented reality mode. Another type of augmented reality, the most common, is uh, the augmented reality based on the marker. A marker is an image, like you can see here, or a physical object that can be recognized and tracked by the framework. So when you are moving the marker, the app can understand this movement and move the content that are augmented on, on the screen of the tablet, like you can see here. Like look at, okay. Uh, here there are some frameworks for manage the augmented reality. You can see here the, the most famous one. For our experiment, we choose the Vuforia. Uh, 
uh, okay now um, with Euphoria we mix the the marker example with the the carbon SDK and we produce this application that is in the store right now and with this app you can track the marker and the marker we choose is your badge on your neck so if you download this app and and you see through the lens the the badge okay like you can see in this video the SDK the framework of Vuforia recognize the marker and uh, build on it a 3D model. We choose Bugdroid. Okay, you can see here. You can see through using yeah, the of camera. Of course, we don't put the phone inside the cardboard, otherwise it was impossible to record uh, the video and show you the screen of the phone. Okay. Right. And moving the the marker, the framework recognized the movement and the object, and the 3D object was moved. So you can use these, of course, like Lucas say in the cardboard, but this is just an example, an experiment for, sh for show you what you can do with augmented reality and the cardboard SDK mixed together. Yeah, if you use it uh, while the phone is inside the cardboard, you really have the, the perception that the Android model is around you over your badge of the dry console. It's cool. And it was really simple. We'd it's interesting to try to do experiment with that. I suggest you to do all. So just just uh, one last thing. Of course, like I, I said before, this is an example, but we want to focus your attention about the potentiality that you have, the potential of the cardboard, the potential of the augmented reality. Just this. So before finish, I just want to add a couple of information. Um, not all the devices work really well with the cardboard. Here we have some of the devices that work well. Of course, the Nexus 5, uh, the Nexus they projected the cardboard on the Nexus 5, Nexus 4, Galaxy, and etc. But there are uh, other devices that doesn't work well with cardboard. For instance, the Nexus 6 is too large. Oh, really? Yeah, the Nexus 6 is large and doesn't fit into cardboard. Or, uh, for example, the Samsung Galaxy X3 uh, works well with the screen, but unfortunately, the magnetometer is in the opposite side uh, not on a, from of the cardboard, so the, the magnetic field isn't detected very well. The trigger doesn't work. You can maybe hack your cardboard and <coughs> put on the other side the magnet, and it can work. And uh, also, for example, a uh, device with a little screen doesn't work well because you see out of the screen and you, you don't get an immersive uh, perspective. So, I think we're done. Yes. Thanks for uh, participating. <laughs> Thank you. you.